Hi guys, Len and Matt here from Emerald Isle Seafoods. So uh, we just got back from the post office. Our parts came in for our trailer, so we're gonna get them opened up, take a look at it, and see what we need for additional hardware. I think all we really need is just the bolts to attach the springs to the, the trailer hangers. I also need to measure the spindles so I can order some stainless sleeves for them. And we'll go, uh, we'll open up these boxes and take a look at them. Okay guys, so this is a, the box with the springs in it. So I got these uh, off eBay from a place. Uh, let's see, they're out of Oregon. It's Elgin Trailers. Um, I'm not promoting them or affiliated with them or getting a sponsorship from them. Uh, one of the reasons I ordered from them is they actually offered free delivery to Kodiak, Alaska, which uh, shipping is expensive up here. So <clears throat> the rest of the uh, trailer park companies off the internet, it's all really the same products by the looks of it. I have a, a suspicion that it's probably the, the same manufacturers or very similar manufacturers so I don't think there's a big difference in quality or anything. So they had a good price, free shipping to Kodiak, so that's who we went with. They got it in the mail right away, which was nice, uh, I think the next day. So these are rated at uh, 1,750 pounds, which were a little heavier than the ones that I did have. Um, the original ones on that trailer were actually uh, three, three leaf springs, and then I did find a set of them here in town, but, uh, and I picked them up, but then after taking a look at what I needed for the hardware and everything, I kind of reconsidered and figured that, the, well, number one, the skiff was pretty heavy. And so I thought I'd just go ahead and beef it up a little bit and then get the hardware that, that came with the kit and then I was covered there. So all I have to do is just pick up the bolts now, four bolts for the, the hangers. <clears throat> so yeah, these were originally what was on it. Um, the other ones were completely destroyed. They were actually bent back the other way and uh, pretty severely rusted. So it'll be nice to have a, a little bit more um, capacity for these <clears throat> and hopefully result in some more longevity. Alright, so there's the new bolts to attach these back to the axle. Got the nuts with them. Wow, nice heavy plates. So I didn't have these plates and of course I would have had to buy the, the U-bolts anyways, so by the time I factored that in, it was just as easy to buy a new set of these. I think these were $79, so I want to say 80 bucks. And like I say, with free delivery to Kodiak, so I can't beat that, pretty heavy. So that's the springs and the hardware. And we'll take a look at the hubs and spindles. So I thought about just keeping the existing spindles, but they were actually uh, the wrong size to get a set of spindle sleeves. So there's one of the hubs. These are galvanized zinc studs, wheel studs. You press them out when they get old, so these should last for a while, I hope. Um, same with bearing protectors. We'll see how long these hold up. I think these are supposed to be stainless. Doesn't say. Hmm. Anyways, another hub. Came with uh, the saddles for the spindles if you were just gonna bolt them on there. I'm actually gonna weld mine into the cross piece that I'm keeping. It was in good enough shape, I can clean it up. So there's the spindle. These ones are a little bit longer than my old ones, so that's good. It'll give some extra support. And uh, now that I have these, I can measure the OD on this. 
shoulder right here and uh, and order the appropriate spindle sleeve so it's just a stainless sleeve that that slides over this and then your uh, your hub seal rides on that stainless ring on that sleeve and so the old ones you know over time this would all become rusty and pitted and so even if you put a new sleeve on there it pretty much just immediately destroys it and I can also measure the seals in here hopefully they just have a number on them and then I can make sure that they'll also fit that and so here's the bearings see the races are already installed so and here's the seals so that's what we got here so I'm excited to get this back together and uh, can get our skiff back on the trailer. So we'll bring you back when we get ready to install these in the, the cross member for the axle. Okay, well, I'll just grab the digital calipers here and, and check this dimension on the shoulder. Looks like we have 1.71, almost 1.72. One looks to be the same. So I'm gonna go take a look and see what I can find for <clears throat> a spindle sleeve and get that ordered. So my spindle where it goes into the axle is uh, one inch and three quarter round stock. But the pipe that it needs to go into is a little over two inches. It's uh, roughly two inches, 60 thou. And so I need to put a sleeve on this to, to take up that, that slop and, and give it a nice secure connection when I weld it in there and keep it from you know, putting all the pressure right here and just being loose in that socket and kind of rattling around over time and fatiguing the weld and possibly breaking off. So my plan is just to take this inch and a half pipe and I'm going to split it in half. I'll open up the radius on this to, to match this piece of round stock and then I'll weld it on each side. So that's one issue that I have. And the other issue is the shoulder where the seal goes here. Uh, this, is, this is where these always seem to fail, especially in saltwater applications. And that's where this trailer is used we use it to launch our sand skiff and then in and out of the ocean and so what happens is salt water gets on the surface and it slowly starts to corrode and pit it and eventually it just gets rough and the seal will just get destroyed it doesn't matter if you put a new seal on it just gets damaged within a few minutes of uh, pulling your trailer down the road so there's a few different manufacturers. They make uh, a sleeve, a spindle sleeve, to go over that. And the problem is, is that this is machined to the wrong dimension to accept that. So I don't have a lathe, and I don't really want to take it down to the local machinist and pay a hundred dollars for him to machine these two spindles. I'm just gonna improvise and and rig up a kind of a poor man's lathe I guess and we're gonna get this knocked down a little bit so it can accept that that sleeve. My idea is this I'm, I'm gonna take my old hub over there and I'm gonna position the spindle in it just like that and then I have some some plugs that I've cut out over the the years that I always say whenever I cut a plug out of a piece of square tube or or uh, some plate or anything I, I always keep those pieces because they come in handy for things and so I'm going to take that plug that I cut with the hole saw it's already got the hole in the middle and so I know that the the middle and the outside will be fairly concentric and I'm going to just weld a stud onto it I'm going to position it over the back of this axle and I'm just going to tack it on there and when I'm done, I'll just have a, a bolt that I can put into my drill press and act as a drive. So all I got to do is set this on the drill press table, lift it up, and then 
chuck that drive into the into the drill and there we go. It's going to be accurate enough that I can take a file and I can run it on here and, and take 20 thou off of each side. I think it'll be just fine and hopefully it'll be a fairly simple and inexpensive alternative to bringing it down to the machinist. So I'm going to get my my pieces and parts together and we'll start by getting the end welded on here and then we'll grab one of these these old hubs and we'll go drop it in there and get it chucked up in the drill press and see if we can't turn this down a little bit. Okay guys, so this is what I have. Just found a washer here. Uh, the OD is like perfect, it's like right at 175 so that'll be real easy to line up on there. Just clean it up and just put a couple of tack welds around the outside. It's not going to take very much holding force to to do what I need to accomplish. Okay, that looks good. So I'm just gonna turn on my, just turn on the, the drill press and I'll just uh, knock the shoulder off these until it fits inside that washer and we'll tack it on there. Okay, that should work right there. So I'll put a couple of tacks on it and that should be good. Let's weld it up. Nothing fancy, just a couple of tacks. Still seems like it's pretty concentric. There's not much run out on it, so I think it'll work good. I'm not even sure if I need to really weld it onto the spindle, maybe just uh, some friction kind of press fit down on the table will be fine. We'll find out here, so I'll get it set up and we'll see what we can do. Okay guys, here's the setup. Uh, old hub for the base. Crappy old bearing so I don't ruin anyone when a bunch of shavings fall on there. And I didn't even bother welding this on there. I just clamped it with a, a hose clamp and I think there'll be plenty of friction there. If it starts to spin and gives us problems, we'll just put a, a single tack on there or something. I'll probably just bring it down to 37 or 38. I'm a little concerned about going too far with it. I don't have the, the stainless sleeves yet. They're in the mail and on the way. So I'm just going to take it down a little ways and uh, and go from there. So right now we are at one inch seven hundred twenty-three thou. I got a brand new file here, and I'm just going to lay it on there and knock that down some so I think I'll just bring it down somewhere about take about 40 thou off of it and then I can do my other part bring it down to the same dimension 
and hopefully the wear rings show up in the next few days and then I can just verify it before I put them on and I'll just hold off on waiting to weld this into the axle at least I can slip it in place and it should be tight enough fit that I can get stuff kind of mocked up outside on the trailer and I'll just weld this in last so let's give it a go Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Let's see if we've even made a dent in it yet. So we're at 1 inch 723 before. And now we're at oh, 1 inch 185 or 1 inch 718. So, we just took about 4 thou. We need to take 40 thou off. Okay, I think this is going to work all right. I'm just going to shave away on this, probably no reason to bore you. So my poor man's lathe technique, so we'll, <laughs> we'll bring you back when we're done. Okay guys, so I just got my part. It's uh, the spindle wear sleeves I was waiting for. So I can finish taking these spindles down to final dimension. This is 1 inch 673, 1676, so... I'm not too far off. Okay, well that is just starting to go on there, so I think that's probably going to be good. Um, uh, yeah, it looks like it went about a third of the way on there, so uh, I think that's probably good. Um, it feels like it's going to tighten up a little bit there, so that seems like it should be about right. Okay, so I just have a piece of inch and a half black pipe, um, schedule 40. I'm just going to cut it down to about four and five, or, uh, three and five eighths for the length and trim this and split it in half and then we'll see how we're going to make it fit on that spindle. Okay, so I just Dig well to this uh, sleeve onto that spindle. Nice and easy, uh, nothing fancy. I'm not gonna worry about welding that out. I did put some heavy tacks on the bottom. Okay, now I need to get all the nasty junk out of this pipe, so I think I can maybe put a clamp on here to hold this from slipping. I'm glad I cleaned that out. Uh, I guess, thankfully, they drilled a hole through those spindles, I think, because that looks like grease to me. So, about got that cleaned up, so I'm just gonna trim the ends of those pipes down and uh, 
get it prepped. I'm just getting these spindles positioned in this axle cross piece here. So just made a mark there. I'll get that uh, mill scale cleaned up right there. And then there is a little bit of wiggle room in here. Probably just put a, a little nub right here of uh, just build up a little weld and, and that'll take some of that slop out of there and just help hold it straighter for when I start to tack it into place and get it lined up and make sure the spindles relatively in parallel with the rest of the uh, with the rest of this steel tube. I just welded a couple little nubs on uh, two sides here. The original ones uh, didn't actually even extend that far. They were only about this far into the tube. I did cut away some of this about a three quarters of an inch on each side, but the original ones just barely came past the beginning of the bracket there. So, so that's substantially more anyways. Okay, so I have this first uh, spindle tacked onto the axle here. I'll get this welded out. I'll have to fill in that uh, little trench there. That's no big deal. I just welded them into this uh, kind of sleeve to expand it a bit, make it fit in the tube. I ran two passes around each one. Let's use my TIG welder. I guess I'm ready to get these wear sleeves on there and and uh, put the hubs on, I suppose. Okay, so that looks good. So I'm going to start, uh, I guess, finish up the shackle links on this and let this dry and then we'll put on the wear sleeves. Okay, we're just gonna clean up the shoulder where the wear ring registers on this spindle. And I think that's probably pretty close to what I had on the other one. About 290 thou. Being on tight, so I'm just gonna go with that. So I do I just end up putting some gasket sealer on here because I wanted to try and ensure that water doesn't get in behind that wear ring and then uh, start to rust the metal and, and possibly push that ring out and deform it.
Figured it couldn't hurt anything. Yep. Just to slip this on there. Just use a little piece of inch and a half aluminum pipe to drive this on there. It didn't really take much. Just tap it into place and that's really about it. This should be sealed from any intrusion, any salt water from getting underneath that wear sleeve, possibly rusting and expanding and pushing this out of round. Drop the bearing in. And yeah, we'll get the seal started. Okay. And there we go. Put that on there. Go. Gotta focus up. See if we can drop this in the junk on the floor with all the metal shavings on it. So trying to do it one-handed. Just snug it up a little bit and uh, feels good. See that seal on the wearing right there? Turned out real good. Very happy with that. There we go. So that's it for the hubs. We're ready for springs and wheels.